All right. Welcome. My name is Brian Danford, and I work for the Jefferson County uh, Extension Office uh, in Monticello. And today is for the Fun Fat Friday, and I am going to do this on nuisance wildlife. Um, and we're going to mainly focus on the uh, mammals for the most part. There are a few reptiles I'm going to throw in um, because, um, oh, and some birds. Um, so I'm not going to focus on the invertebrates. Um, and just to give you a little bit of background with my, or a little bit of background, um, I am a, I went to Auburn University and got a wildlife biology degree. And I've been working with parks and recreation and nature centers for quite a while now. And all the stuff that I'm going to say came off of uh, different research websites. And um, you'll see the different um, articles and stuff. Um, you can actually go to Ask IFAS uh, on the University of Florida and type in how to deal with nuisance wildlife. And they'll give you these same articles I'm going to use. Uh, but we're going to go over um, just the different things. We're going to go over the benefits of why you should just um, let them be. Uh, we're going to go after, um, go also over the disadvantages of why to get rid of them. So, um, but I, um, because all animals are, are going to be around you and it's just a matter of, um, of just, is it really worth it? Um, some of them, yes. Um, the, and then there's others. It's like, okay, well, it's just, um, there's some minor inconveniences that are um, are happening. Um, and if you would like to, you can contact uh, myself. Um, I am actually the program assistant, but I have a wildlife background and or the ag agent and uh, D. Anthony Price, um, and he can help you as well. So I'm going to get started and I'm going to share my screen with this. Um, but there are two articles. Um, this came off of the UF IFAS uh, website. Um, and I'm going to go over these on how, I mean, these are the nuisance uh, deterrents that you can potentially use for, for any wildlife. Um, and we'll go over these first. But um, but what a, wild, or a nuisance wildlife is, is a animal that is um, not just, I mean, it's not just roaming in your yard. That's not really a nuisance. If it's, um, if it's a nuisance wildlife, it's going after your pet, it's eating your veggies, um, it's hurting your crops. Um, that would be, um, a nuisance wildlife and you can't just go randomly shooting every critter out there. Um, that is against, uh, the fish and wildlife. And if they have gotten wind that you're doing that, they will send an officer to your house. And um, if there's evidence and, um, and things um, associated with you and they can find animals and that type of thing or pictures of the animal, and that's why Facebook can be very bad, um, then they will give you a fine or give you a warning, say, hey, don't do this and try to, um, try to have the proper uh, channels. So these are deterrents that can work. Um, but let me tell you right now, um, there there is not a one-stop shop with any nuisance wildlife. Um, there are multiple ways of getting in your yard. Um, but one thing that um, a lot of them suggest is um, this is bird netting. Um, so there's bird and uh, deer netting, which can be put in your yard, and it will help deter animals from, from getting into your yard. However, I will say with the bird netting, um, the potential of hurting a, a, a bird is um, can be a challenge because they they uh, when they do wildlife research um, and try to capture birds they use uh, it's similar to this but it's more like a like a fishing net kind of stuff this is more of a plasticky uh, it's a black um, net uh, but uh, birds can potentially get caught in this and so you have um, if if a bird gets stuck. <clears throat> then you have to figure out how to get it out safely. Um, and that would, that will be a, um, with a little guys like the, if it's a chickadee or cardinal, it's easier, but um, easier to get those guys out than if, um, um, than if you, it, you saw like a red tail hawk or something being in your net, that's a whole lot. <laughs> um, it will require someone like a fish and wildlife person um, who has training on um, dealing with hawks. So, 
so there are goods and bads, but this would be uh, great for deterring uh, animals out of an area. However, if you have uh, cropland of 50 to 100 or 1,000 acres of land um, and you try to put up this netting, it's going to cost you a lot. And animals will always find a way um, over, or under, around. Um, they may even bite through it. So, so that's not a completely one-stop shop. There are... Um, there's this wire thing, uh, cage that you can put around trees that you don't want to be eaten. Beavers are notorious for going after the bark layer. It's called the cambium layer of trees. And so you put these around trees that you don't want them to go after. Um, deer will also browse on new, these are called saplings. So trees that are just growing are called saplings. And so you're trying to protect them from, um, from getting um, eaten alive. Uh, but with any uh, meshing or fence, what you're going to have to do, because uh, otherwise they'll dig right under it, um, is uh, bury the fence like uh, a foot or two under the ground. And I would even say, um, like on this fence, if we're looking at this one, um, what I would say is not only going down into the ground two feet, but if you're dealing with a, um, with a guy that likes to dig, um, I would put um, a flat piece right here, like lay it on top of and just put it flat. Um, just put it, uh, if you can look at the, but yeah, just put it flat and put it on top of uh, the dirt and cover it up a little bit. And so when they try to dig, they'll hit, hit the net or hit the fence and will stop immediately. Um, so this will help. Um, and this, and because gophers and moles, when they dig, um, they don't like to go way underground, but um, they can go way underground. Uh, but they like to uh, be in that top, the top uh, couple layers of soil because it's a lot easier to dig through than because as you go further and further into the so into the soil, um, the dirt gets a lot harder. So, um, so you're going to have to um, so he'll stay on top. This guy. Um, the thing is, is with these deterrents, like if you get like a, a plastic owl or this bag of menacing uh, <laughs> bird eyes, these may work for me. Eh, uh, it may work for a couple of days or maybe a week or two, uh, but eventually the animal will catch on. It's like, okay, that thing hasn't moved in a month. Um, and they, they potentially, I've, I've actually seen pictures of where um, a woodpecker has Pecked, um, completely pecked apart an owl, uh, plastic owl, which was kind of funny, but it happens. Um, and then they have cellophane. Um, but mainly what you're trying to do is you're trying to get, um, you're trying to scare the animal. So anything that makes a lot of noise or cellophane or is shiny and causes light to reflect and that type of thing may work for a little while. Um, there's uh, noise uh, makers that you can get that uh, when they pick up any detection, they send out um, sonic uh, noises. However, you have to be cautioned with this because um, if you have a dog or pets or anything else, um, it can hurt or potentially damage their, their ears as well. So that is something that you've got to keep in mind. There are chemical repellents. Um, the easiest one is probably like cayenne pepper or hot sauce. Um, you can put it down and uh, armadillos don't like cayenne pepper, so they'll go the other way. Um, but yes, um, chemicals can work somewhat. Um, if it's a prey item, like if it's a bunny rabbit or armadillo um, or, um, or some other guys, um, you can put, uh, I know it's kind of disgusting, but predator urine. So it's basically a, a bottle of bobcat or coyote or whatever urine and put it around. Um, that can help somewhat, um, but um, just know that it may not work all the time. Um, and it'll also, um, just like anything else, it will diffuse uh, over time and the smell will uh, dissipate. So if you don't keep on top of it and keep putting it out there, um, then it, then the smell will go away and you'll have the same issue. So now I'm going to flip for uh, to wildlife damage because um, right now you may have damage in your yard and you don't know what it is. So we're going to take a look at this next um, article. And it's how to, how to identify wildlife. So like I said earlier, um, just go to the UF extension. It's like, um, it's called Ask IFAS. 
and um, you can just type in how to identify wildlife species and it will give you the same exact article that I'm in. Um, the main way to tell if an animal has been there are tracks and scat. Um, like it says here, all animals have a track pattern that they leave. However, if you have hard ground, uh, you won't see many tracks. However, if you have like a wetland area or pond or, um, or an area where the soil is pretty soft, um, you can pick up um, animal tracks pretty easily. They also leave scat, like um, coyotes and um, foxes are notorious for leaving scat because they'll pee on it and it's a way of them marking their territory. So they will leave behind scat and that's a really easy way to identify them. If you see a big pile of berries, that is just, um, yeah, it, this looks like just a big pile um, of uh, conically kind of shaped berries. Um, it's, it's a bear. Or if it's like, if you've ever seen uh, small Coke cans at um, the grocery store, um, black bear scat is the same size and shape as those. So if you see a whole like a pile of bear can poop looking, I mean, it's all black, well, relatively black, um, then you're dealing with a bear. But you have soil disturbances. So um, if you see a den with a flat roof, you can see that this is a flat roof. This is a gopher tortoise. They like to live in longleaf pines. And so they, um, and um, you are not to mess with these guys' burrows. Um, the gopher tortoise is on the list of endangered species. And if you mess with their, their burrow and uh, Fish and Wildlife catches wind of this, um, you can get upwards of five to 10, um, if not a higher uh, $5,000 fine and potential time in jail. Um, and um, it's just a matter of, um, so yes, please don't um, do anything. Um, a lot of people think that these are like, um, it is true that other animals will use it. So like a snake home or um, other critters like chipmunks and other ground dwelling critters may also use this home. Um, but don't ever dump any gasoline down any hole. It's not worth it. Um, and then this, this hole, the difference between these two holes is this one is more rounded. So you can see that this is a rounded hole. And you can also, you know how fresh the hole is by, by the dirt outside the entrance. If the entrance, um, if the dirt is looks very fresh and like it's been dug and you can actually see tracks and markings in the soil, then it's very fresh. However, if it looks like it's been rained on quite frequently and like a old, uh, like the colors are faded, then you're dealing with a much uh, older uh, burrow. Uh, but this is a armadillo burrow. Um, and the difference is, is it's a rounded burrow. Um, how, and also, um, fox burrows are, are going to be bigger rounded like um, of this, and there is one near my house, and it's very similar looking. It is a hole in the ground, and just think of like how big it would take to have a fox to go under the ground or in the ground. <clears throat> Okay, so um, so this is an armadillo. Um, typically, what you'll have is a place where it looks like a like a cone has been basically put in the ground, and it's basically him sticking his nose in the ground, trying to get to the grubs and other things in the soil. And so that that's your armadillo, and they'll be all over the yard. A lot of people don't like them because they undo the grass of their yard and make it um, not look uniform. Um, however, if you put the soil back and um, allow the grass to regrow, um, you won't even know he's, he's there. Yes, it's a pain in, in uh, the short term, but in the long term, um, he kind of aerates the soil in a way, and he also gets rid of um, critters that may harm, um, harm your grass. These are pocket grofers. Um, so you can see how there's an entrance right here, uh, but typically they'll close the entrance and they'll just be a raised, um, raised bed. So like this down here, you can see how all the, all the, uh, the dirt has been pushed up. Um, and I see with this frequently around here, especially uh, after it's rained or if the soil is um, looser than, uh, than can be, uh, but you'll see this. And moles and trues will do kind of the same thing, but it won't be as extensive. Um, and also you won't see these piles. I've not, um, um, 
so so this is your gopher and they will tunnel through this um gophers can be a pain because what they'll do is they'll eat veggies and roots from underneath like if you have carrots what they'll do is you may have the top of the carrot and you may pull it up and there's nothing of the carrot underneath um so they can be a pain um and the um and that um those earlier metal pieces if you put them in the ground where they're coming in um, you can exclude them from where you want. Like if you have a small little raised bed garden or a small little area, you can uh, fence it off with metal flashing um, and it will help. Um, so, yeah. So this, um, pigs are horrible. If you have a pig in your area, they are highly aggressive and will root uh, the heck out of the ground um, and will tear up the ground. Um they go after the tubers and insects and everything of, of the ground. You know when they've been there. It's usually a very big area. If you notice this picture, um, you can see in the background, you can see how big of an area. They will just absolutely root the heck out of an area. Um, they are um, The only way you can get rid of them is to trap, trap them. Um, you can try excluding them, but they can uh, bully their way through it. Um, so that's not a good thing. Um, this is gray squirrel damage on a tree, um, and you can see just how, how it's been done. If you ever see a, like, a the very end of a tree branch, like if you see a little, um, if the very tip and like the very end of the needles and just a little bit of, of stem, and you can see that it's been chewed off, that's a squirrel. And he typically will knock off the very end of it so he can get to the good layer. And he, they really like the the new growth, um, so they will, um, so they will chew it off. And also, you know, if it's a squirrel, is because if it's a squirrel tree, because what they'll you'll see is piles of uh, all the all the bracts. So those are all the pieces of those out outer lining pieces are called bracts, and it's uh, so we can get to the seeds that are on the inside. And so you'll basically just see these. Um, these cones with nothing on them, and you'll see a whole pile of them below a tree. This other picture, um, typically what you'll see with bear is you'll just see shreds. I mean, basically what he's doing is he's um, taking his claws and going straight down a tree, and so you'll just see, <laughs> I mean, if, if you've ever taken a knife or a kind of a blade and just gone down the tree, it kind of curls the, the tree as you go down. And so you'll see that pattern on a bear tree. Um, so that is a bear. Um, and then this one down here, this is deer. Um, a lot of times they'll, they'll do what's called a rub or scrape and they will take their antlers and they'll scrape off an area um, and it will be very visible. And this is their way of, of marking their territory. And this is a pig rub, I guess. And so you can see that um, he will definitely cause rubbings as well. This is your woodpecker. Um, also, um, there are other um, like sap suckers and uh, other things that like to, um, well, the sap sucker is, a, is your northern flicker and it's a woodpecker, um, but they make holes like this galore in, in trees trying to get the grubs and other things and larvae uh, of worms inside of them. Um, and here is a, a deer. Um, deer don't, um, they don't have incisors on the front. They don't have, they have uh, only the bottom uh, teeth on, on their jaw. So they live, leave a very not so crisp bite, um, but they'll just bite the very end of the twig. Um, this is beaver damage. You can see that the, uh, and beaver damage is usually around a water body. If you're not near water and you have this type of, well, you won't have this type of damage. But they will, um, they're, they're constantly going after the inner layer of bark. Um, and it help, and it's also because they need to file down their teeth. So, um, and then watermelons. Um, I didn't realize this until recently, but coyotes and foxes love watermelon. Um, if you have a watermelon patch, um, this is your evidence of them going to town on your watermelon. So... <clears throat> That is um, those two articles. So I'm going to switch over to the um, <clears throat> I'm going to switch over to my um, my other screen uh, that has the PowerPoint. 
Uh, but like I said, you can get on um, uh, the UF Ask IFAS, and they will take you to the same places. Um, okay, so we've already technically started um, our wildlife talk, but what is an, a wildlife nuisance animal? Uh, this is a definition. Um, causes property damage, uh, presents a threat to public safety, um, causes annoyance uh, within or under a building. Um, and exhibiting behavior that uh, we find annoying. Um, <laughs> I guess you could call weeds <laughs> annoying and a nuisance, uh, but they're harder to control. Well, I don't know, some wildlife are, are even worse than, than weeds. <laughs> so, okay, so these are the deterrents. Um, mothballs are one things that um, potentially can be used for um, for snakes. However, I didn't realize how toxic they were. Um, they are not very nice to smell. They have a very pungent odor to them. And um, they uh, they have chemicals in them. Uh, but they will keep away um, the furry critters for a little while. Um, and then you also have, this is a sonic um, silencer or a sonic thing where basically it picks up uh, movement and goes off. This is a sprinkler one. Um, and animals don't like to be hit with sprinkler. And you can also have lights. Um, if you have um, a, a night lights where um, they flip on when wildlife get, gets close, um, animals will, uh, for a little while, they'll, they'll go the other way unless they've caught, um, unless they're wise enough and they just don't care anymore. So keeping away uh, critters. Um, so the main things that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna have to be creative sometimes. Um, this is a one I found on Google. Uh, they put plastic forks um, so the animal would go down and um, hit the fork. Um, if you have a place on a fence or a wall and they're coming up and over a wall, I've actually seen um, glass being put on it. I've seen um, like not barbed wire, but you can see um, like Pikes, um, so like spikes all on the wall, and so where they come up and over. Um, but the best thing to do is feed pets inside. Do not keep um, any type of food outside. That includes compost. Compost can uh, attract a critter. If you do have compost, you need to have some kind of lid or mesh wire to um, to keep it from um, having an animal go um, go in it. Um, debris piles. Um, if you don't want an animal hiding in your yard, um, debris piles are great places for all kinds of mice and snakes and other things to hide. So do not have any debris piles. Like if you just had a hurricane, well, this may be a, an exception, but if um, we have hurricanes and all that type of thing, and so animals are trying to find a place to hide. And so they go in these debris piles. Um, if you have a outside um, firewood container area, um, snakes, especially snakes, like to hide in, in the firewood. Um, I was in Texas and was going to get firewood and was about to reach my hand and saw a copperhead sitting on top of the, the firewood pile. Um, and it's just a matter of exclusion, putting a fence around it, um, putting wire or um, basically excluding the animal. And that's what you're gonna have to do. If you have any holes whatsoever in your house, or um, under your patio or anything, an animal will go, hey, it's a new home, and they'll go and move in. Um, so the best way to keep out animals is to not have any open entrances. Um, have a trellis along the bottom side of, of your area, and it will ex um, exclude all the animals from going under your trailer or in your home. Um, so that's a really good way. Um, Another thing they, uh, that the article said to do is to have sacrificial plants. Um, if you're going to plant a garden, um, expect to lose like five, I think they said anywhere from five to 10%. Um, so just do five or 10% or 15% more than, and just say, okay, well, I know all the ones on the outside may get eaten, but if I have X number of plants on the inside, this is what we'll live off of. Um, so that's one way um, to do this. Um, and then the other factor is, is are they really hurting you? Um, are they really affecting you that bad to where you want to put in loads of time, loads of money and loads of energy trying to keep out these guys? Because um, there's some like squirrels, <laughs> squirrels are one, 
where we have tried to make obstacle horses and spinning objects. And you can see squirrels is latching on and just spinning in circles um, and just and flying off of them. Uh, but I've seen people making all kinds of contraptions and squirrels, squirrels go right through it. Um, same with mice. Um, so yes, yeah, so they are um, two very <laughs> determined uh, critters that are out there. Um, you also have to know your rules. Um, the Fish and Wildlife Commission uh, requires all animals captured as nuisance either be humanely destroyed, in other words, um, shot in the head and not allowed to suffer at all, um, or released on some con um, some property like a park or or some or or somewhere else. However, <laughs> if you don't move them far enough, um, and even if you do move them far enough, a lot of animals like to be in a certain home range. Um, like there's been multiple instances where animals have relocated back to their home. Uh, there was one actually, they took uh, lynx out of the uh, Canadian Rockies and they moved him all the way into central Colorado. And one of the lynx decided he didn't want to stay there and he went all the way back to, um, to Canada. And they knew this because he was in a leg hole trap, which is basically, it holds the leg. Um, it's a trap that basically gets sprung in um and it got got hurt and they had and it had a tag on its ear and so they found out um but yes you need to make sure that um if you're taking a uh, of any type of animal um you have to get permits for a lot of them um so these are um some of the requirements um and they are on the fish and uh, wildlife sites, um, but you're more than welcome to stop the video and write any of them down. Um, but just um, just know that they are are protected. Okay, so take rules. So take of a nuisance uh, alligator, deer, bear, bobcat, birds protected under the Federal Migratory Bird Treaty Act, or if it's listed under the uh, Endangered Species Act, um, then it's um, prohibited. Um, you're not allowed under the Migratory Bird Treaty Act to have any type of bird feathers, um, skulls, talons, um, or anything having to do with it. There was, back in the day, it's called the bird trade. And, um, and it was basically, they were um, the affluent people, the people that had a lot of money, like to show off um, how much money they had by having these um, plumes of very rare birds on their hats and um, adorned all of their um, their attire with uh, like fox furs and mink fur. Well, it's still done somewhat today, but a lot of them are fake today. Um, but just make sure that before you take anything that it's not protected and make sure that it's also not permitted. Um, if someone gets wind and you uh, make mentioning that you took something and a fish and wildlife officer can find out about it, um, then that's not a good thing. There are trappers out there that, um, however, when they come out, it's usually several hundred dollars for them to remove a critter. So just make sure it's worth it. Um, and also, <laughs> if you remove one armadillo or two armadillos, um, they are prolific breeders. Um, same with like foxes and coyotes. You'll have other ones move right in. So uh, I don't know if it's even a, a smart move to get rid of one animal because you'll have another one show up within a month or two. Um, so, okay. So we're going to go over specific animals and hopefully not go too long. Um, but armadillos. So you may say it's a... I don't know. I mean, it depends on, I guess, what you like, but it's um, um, the benefits are it rids your yard of grubs and insect pests and other invertebrates lurking in your soil. Um, the problems are it digs in the soil and it hurts gardens and it can put little holes uh, throughout your all of your area. Um, so that can be a really bad. Um, the deterrents that I've seen out there are cayenne pepper, really doesn't like it. Um, he, and here are two other very um, cheap um, fixes are you can mix ammonia with vinegar. Absolutely make sure that you're not mixing vin uh, ammonia with Clorox. That is called mustard gas and it can potentially hurt you very, very badly. <laughs> so make sure you don't do that. Um, or just have ammonia or vinegar. They don't like their smells. Their nose um, picks up senses very well. 
because uh, it has to locate critters in, in the ground. Um, another things that it mentioned um, were, these are plants that you can put in your yard to deter them. Um, uh, they do like to, uh, to dig under fences. Like I, I currently have a fence in my, my own backyard and I have an arm, armadillo somehow getting into our yard and I've looked along our entire fence and there doesn't appear to be a hole, but somehow this guy is getting in, in our yard. So, um, so yeah. <laughs> um, so yes, you can, other exclusion things that you can do is uh, fencing and sprinklers. Um, or sheet metal and wire uh, fence buried two feet underground, like I said earlier. Okay, coyotes. This guy is absolutely hated. Um, before the 1960s, 70s, uh, we used to have wolves in the area. We used to have red, red wolves, very common. Um, and red wolves are a threat, or um, they are threatening to a coyote. Coyotes don't like to be in the same area as a wolf. Just like foxes don't like to be in the same area as a coyote. Um, they are seen as, as enemies because a wolf is bigger than a coyote, so it can take out a coyote very easily. And a coyote is bigger than a fox, and so it can take out a fox. So, um, so they have to be aware of one another. Um, okay, so you may say there are no benefits. Um, however, I disagree. There's a natural balance. The reason why we're having out of control mice and rat populations, as well as moles and all these other rodents, is because we have taken out the top predators. We have taken out uh, coyotes and foxes and other critters um, that are keeping these guys in, um, in check. And we're also making it very hard for them to find a home. Um, these guys are very sneaky. Um, or we do have what are called urban coyotes, uh, which roam uh, the areas around uh, housing. Um, they are definitely in, in my area and you'll hear them yipping and yowling. Um, you know they're there. Um, Sometimes they won't, uh, you won't hear them until um, <clears throat> until they're right on top of you and then they'll let you know that they're there. Um, they are a threat to little dogs. Um, do not keep um, dogs outside. Um, and in order to keep them out of, um, of your livestock, um, it is strongly recommended to have a mule or donkey in your area and it will um, beat the snot out of a coyote. <laughs> um, and you can also have, there are other um, dogs that can be put in your area um, to defend your livestock. I know most people, when they see a coyote, shoot them on sight, um, but just make sure that you're, you're doing it the right way. Um, and if you shoot one, the sad thing is um, there'll be five others right behind him moving right in. Um, and most of the articles out there that I've read, it's like, you, you're not getting rid of this guy. Um, he moved in when the wolf um, was ex, um, extirpated, which means he moved out of the area. Um, so the disadvantage is it kills pets. They're scary and it eats fruit. It likes watermelon, like we said earlier. Um, don't feed them, keep pets inside, feed pets inside, cover mm -hmm. compost, and we all went over all this. Scare devices, lights, horns, slingshots, rocks, uh, make, um, and just like I said earlier, nothing works all the time. You'll just, you'll have to basically uh, use a variety of different techniques and never keep with one. Uh, when they catch wise that um, you're not going to do anything to them, they're going to come and punch in, go, ah, ha, ha, this won't work on me. Um, think of Wiley E. Coyote, how he keeps trying and trying and trying to go after the roadrunner. So... <laughs> Um, trapping and shooting is a temporary solution, but like I said, they move in. Um, he's a very adaptable critter that we're not getting rid of anytime soon. So, okay, bats. Um, so this is a house, and basically you're trying to exclude them with wire and mesh. Um, you'll have places in the attic. Um, so you're, you're looking for very small holes um, in, your, um, in the side of your house, and you're trying to exclude them. However, um, there are times when you're not, sorry, one second. Um, there are times when you're not to go after them because um, they have breeds. Um, and I don't see that. Um, 
but there are certain months that you um, can't exclude them or can't exclude them because they have pups in their area. And I think you're allowed to exclude them after May. Um, I think their broods or whatever you want to call them are more in winter and spring. Um, so, <clears throat> so yeah. Um, problems are diseases. They do carry rabies and other, was it histoplasmosis, which was another pretty bad, nasty, um, potentially deadly disease. Um, their poop is called guano, which uh, actually um, there's cosmetics out there that use poop. Uh, there's also uh, coffee that um, is very well gone after because um, bats have eaten it and it's come out the other end and it supposedly gives off a good flavor. I'm just telling you what I've read, uh, but it is out there. Um, there was a TV show or a movie that made fun of it, but yes, that does exist. Um, and you exclude them where you, where you don't want them. But like this says, in the past 30 years, there's only been eight human fatalities in the US and Canada um, attributed to rabid bats. Um, the really, the advantage of these guys is they get rid of thousands of insects in one night. They can eat five, um, five to 6,000 insects in one night time. Um, so think of all those mosquitoes and yellow flies and horse flies and um, noceums that are constantly around your house. Well, if you have a few bats flying around, um, that's a very good thing and you, you want them and they can get rid of all those other nasty guys. Um, and you can put up bat houses in order to attract them. They're also very cool, uh, like in the twilight. So, um, so dawn and dusk times, you can see them flying around and they'll do all kinds of crazy. Um, they, they don't fly like a bird because they're very erratic and they keep flipping and uh, back and forth. Um, so that's, they're very cool to watch. Um, and they're really, I mean, they use their, uh, their echolocation, which is them sending out um, a sound and having it bounce back in order to capture things around. And if they ever accidentally run into you, it's like, oh, they got my got my hair and they're coming after me. They're highly aggressive. That's not true. They're trying to just escape wherever they are. Um, I've had them in, in, uh, in basements before where they were trying to fly out and came uh, right um, almost right at us and then flew the other way. Um, but they really don't uh, don't want to um, to hurt us. Okay, so I had this wrong. It says summer is illegal to trap bats. Um, so, um, so the best time to exclude these is fall, winter, and spring, and, it, and it's illegal in the summer. So I had it backwards. Sorry, um, but they will roost in your attics um, and um, and cause messes um, and smells in your attic, um, and they can go through three eighths of an inch. So. Um, so yes, there are trade-offs to having having them around, but you can put up bat houses and exclude them from your house if you want them there. There are other bats out there that don't uh, that won't go in your house, but they'll sleep like in trees and that type of thing. Okay, bear. Um, very hard to exclude um, benefits. Their nature aesthetics. Um, they like to eat grubs and insects. Uh, they like to eat honey, um, but they can be very uh, destructive. Um, I we ha I have a cottage and it ripped a hole and basically sat down at the fridge and decided to eat everything in the fridge and made a mess of the um, of the the floor. Um, so it was pretty interesting. Um, you can scare them away with horns uh, or lights or sound or um, the best thing to do is bear spray. Um, uh, a gun may or may not work. Bear's skull is pretty thick and you will, um, before it dies, more than likely it's going to take you out as well. Um, so I would strongly suggest not using a gun. Um, and they're also, I mean, eh, they're, I mean, they'll go the other way. Um, and all you do is you stand up to them but you can fence them out. So don't keep food outside. And also if you have bird feeders, take them down and put them inside during um, during the nighttime um, and clean up the uh, bird feed underneath the bird feeder. Um, if you live in a bird area, or not a bird area, a bear area. <clears throat> Cottontail rabbit. Uh, benefits, part of nature aesthetics. Um, it feeds on 
uh, insect or not insects, but plants around, um, and it can be a pest in gardens. Um, and it's poop, and it eats plants. Um, so this, so the main thing you can do here, uh, predator urine bleh, works very well. Fencing cayenne pepper, um, you can live trap them pretty easily. You can put bird seed or uh, like peanut butter and other things in a trap. Um, it's uh, they're called have a heart traps, and you can. Uh, take this guy um, out there. Um, but rabbits, um, and also if you have a rabbit, more than likely you're going to attract the guys that like to go after them. So um, we have, we did have a rabbit problem and we had foxes move in and we no longer have a rabbit problem. Um, and so uh, rabbits, eh, they're, I mean, the only nuisance is, is they eat, um, your your plants is probably the the number one thing, but you can exclude them fairly easily. And if you have cropland, um, uh, I mean you can, you you just may have to have like sacrificial plants. <laughs> so, <clears throat> gray squirrel. Uh, we talked about this guy kind of earlier. Um, the advantage is is he plants plants all over the place because what he'll do is right before winter ha hits. Um, he'll cache or put um, seedlings or seeds all, all over the place that you'll have an oak uh, come out of nowhere that you didn't realize was there. Um, and it potentially can hurt plants. Um, it can definitely get in your house. Um, I have seen instances where they get inside of buildings. Um, I actually had one get went through the chimney and into um, the inner part of a house. Um, they can be a major pest. Um, <clears throat> but I've I've heard from <laughs> from people that um their their meat is eh, it's okay to eat so um but yes if you use repellents like cayenne pepper or or hot sauce on stuff they would potentially go after um then it will help um you can also do hardware cloth and other things um to help exclude them and uh, but like I said they're very they. <laughs> there's been mazes out there and they still get through. So, um, so yeah, you can try to exclude them, but it's just very hard to do. And if you shoot one of them, um, there'll be 10 more show up in your yard. So, um, yeah. Possum. He may look ugly, but he is highly beneficial. There really isn't a disadvantage um, when it comes to them. I mean, yes, they're opportunistic and they'll eat fruit and veggies and that type of thing. Um, they are constantly found on roadways just because uh, if they're ever scared, they have a nat I mean, it's a natural ability to just fall over and play dead. So, um, but the advantage of him, um, there's been research um, and it eats lots of ticks. So uh, the research says five to 8,000 ticks are eaten a year. So you want this guy to be around. Um, he is an opportunist. They're very clean. They don't have rabies. Uh, they have very few diseases um, at all, uh, but if you do want to exclude them, um, you have fencing, um, dog smell, noise, um, patch holes. Um, they obviously can climb trees and other things, so keeping them out of your yard um, may or may not happen. Um, they're, um, they're climbers and that type of thing, so, um, but yeah. But not very many many of them survive because um, they keep constantly getting hit the road, kind of like armadillos. Okay, so the pocket gopher, uh, we talked about him and and the sign of the pocket gopher earlier. Um, advantage it aerates the soil. Um, it helps pathways of like um, of other critters to to get, and it goes after the grubs. However, it can also destroy plants from underneath. And now you have uh, big underground tunnels and holes that you have to now fill in. Um, and so you have to figure out a way of, um, of, of, of dealing with that. There are baits and stuff out there that potentially could kill them. However, when you're going after any type of rodent or, um, or mammal, just remember that whatever you do to that guy, um, if a hawk or an eagle or um, your dog gets a hold of that critter and eats it, that toxin that's in that animal will get in your dog and kill him. Uh, my uncle had this happen to one of his dogs 
in his yard um, about a month ago where someone poisoned the mice and rats and the mouse and rat uh, went into his yard and the dog ate it and it killed uh, the dog uh, within minutes. I mean, it, they, he didn't have enough time to get it to the vet. So just remember that. Um, and that's why DDT was so harmful is because of um, the accumulation of the chemical um, in other uh, critters to where it harmed and almost not, knocked out the bald eagle because uh, they would sit on the egg and the egg would be immediately crushed. Um, and it did a lot of harm to a lot of our um, our feathered friends. So, um, but yes, fencing and trapping definitely works. Predator urine, um, if you have cats, the cats will, uh, like a barn cat, um, it'll go after your mice and rats and other things. Raccoon, I'm trying not to keep this too long, but this is, um, these guys are a pain. <laughs> um, aesthetics and part of the food chain, however, they do have rabies. They are problematic. Um, do not corner these guys. Um, I thought they were cute and cuddly and whatever. And there are numerous people, um, nu numerous cases where a raccoon was cornered and they have sharp little claws and don't um, aren't afraid to use them. Um, so definitely um, you have to watch, watch this guy. Um, you have to cover your garbage cans or, or have them in a protected area. Um, make sure that you don't have any type of food, bird seed, um, or anything that may attract these guys to your yard. Um, and then nephthalene crystals are your mothballs. Um, and obviously it'll keep them away somewhat, but um, and noise making devices help real well too. Um, but yeah, so they suggest having electric fences um, if it's a larger area, but that can be costly. So foxes, um, they're very sly and sneaky. Um, they kill pests. Um, they're a cool animal and it's a nature connection. Um, disadvantages, it has rabies. Um, it will go after small, small dogs um, and it also eats fruit. Um, you can exclude them by fences and noises and dogs and lights. Um, if you have a dog in your yard um, and um, like a bigger dog, then they will go the other way. Um, they're only about 20 to 25 pounds, so they're not very big, um, but they're pretty sly and sneaky. I mean, they, they know their boundaries and how they can sneak through stuff. Um, that's why the term sly as a fox <laughs> happens. Um, but like we said earlier, the hardware cloth and galvanized sheet metal, you can put that in to exclude um, to, to exclude foxes. Um, but if you have crops, I mean, if you have watermelon that, I mean, the watermelon potentially could um, go out or you could have a problem with foxes and coyotes, but if you have a big area of, um, of watermelon, um, you may have an issue. <laughs> um, or, I mean, if foxes are in your area, I mean, you I would plant something that a fox doesn't go after. I mean, they only go after kind of like fruity type stuff. So, I mean, you can plant corn or uh, cotton or, or something else. Um, but um, these guys are definitely smart and they'll, they're, they're in the area. Striped skunk, he's a little stinker. Um, he eats insects and pests and they stink to high heaven um, and they eat fruit. Um, you're, you'll have to fix holes and exclude them. Um, emotion sensitive lights um i wouldn't allow your dog outside um your dog will get sprayed and go the other way and then you'll have a stinky dog for about a month um that stench doesn't go away um you can try to put vinegar and tomato sauce on it but he still won't yeah he won't smell right and uh you won't want him climbing into your bed or on your couch for a little while so um but yes, you uh, you can smell this guy two miles away, um, and they like to be. Un uh, I've there's been numerous cases where they are under patios and other things, and it's just a matter of having like a trellis or some type of fencing um, to exclude them from underneath your building. Um, White-tailed deer. Um, he can be a problem. They do eat a wide variety of uh, plants. Um, however, if they don't like to be fenced in, fences are your number one way of deterring uh, a, a deer. Um, 
However, if you have a big area, um, the best thing is um, to have some sacrificial plants or some plants that are more tasty um, to them. Um, there are lists out there of more preferred plants, so I would take a look at them. Um, but yes, I mean, electric wire and exclusionary things are like if you have a backyard garden or a place where you don't want them, um, then you're going to just try to have to uh, exclude them. Um, so yeah, pigs, we talked about them earlier. They're majorly rooting uh, advantages, sausage, bacon, need I say more. Um, um, the disadvantages uh, are highly aggressive. It eats plants, you don't mess with them. Um, the only way to get rid of them is trapping or shooting. Um, they're trying to, in Texas, trying to find a bait that is specific to only pigs. Um, they're unsuccessful thus far, and they've been doing this for 15 or 20 years, um, and they're try trying trying every everything they can, but nothing is working. Um, these were not originally here. Uh, wild pigs were introduced in like the 1940s, 50s by Europeans, um, and then they went feral, uh, which means they went wild, and so they are very good at what they do um, and they will root up the area very quickly. Uh, but their, their tracks are more rounded. Uh, the deer are more pointy. Um, so, yeah. Snakes. Um, lots of people don't like them. Um, and it's not very often that you will get um, a snake bite. Uh, you're a hundred times greater chance of being in a highway accident um, than dying from um, a snake or getting hit by a venomous snake. Uh, there's one death every four to five years, and you're more likely to die by a lightning strike than you are to die of a snake bite. Um, I'm living proof that you can get bit by a, a venomous snake and live. Um, a snake bit me on the, on the foot. Because um, at nighttime, what they like to do is they will find a hot rock or uh, bricks or patio and stay on it because they are what's called ectothermic, which means that they will pick up the heat of things around them. And so the only way that they can stay warm during the cold um, cold months are um, either going underground or being on hotter places. Um, so even on a cool evening, like if it's in the 50s, um, snakes typically don't move very well under about 60 degrees. Um, and so, yes, every single dog I, I've had has gotten bit by a snake and they've all lived to tell the tale, um, even a cotton mouth. Um, this guy bit, bit my dog on the muzzle. Um, I had a lab and it bit him. He gave him Benadryl and he was fine. Um, and I got bit by a copperhead. So yes, you can get bit and you'll be fine. However, most people don't like them in your yard. Um, but there are a lot of snakes out there. And the difference is, is uh, if you want to know the difference between a venomous snake and a non-venomous snake is a venomous snake has, if you notice the heads, the heads are much larger on a venomous snake. And they also, if you, if you get close enough, they have little slits in their eyes and it's called cat, the cat eye. Um, so if you get that close to them, um, then you know it's a venomous snake. But the biggest thing is, is is the bigger size head. Or if you hear a rattle, then yeah, that's a that's a rattlesnake. So uh, the pygmy rattler. Um, when I was around the pygmy rattler that bit my dog, um, I didn't hear a rattle. Um, all all I saw was my dog going down to try to figure out what this thing was, and it bit him on the muzzle. Um, so um, you can get get rid of them um, or try to exclude them, but they can make it through small holes. Um, you can try to put in mothballs and other liquids um, as smelling agents to get rid of them. They smell by their tongue. Um, and just, I mean, the best thing to do with them is to keep a clean yard, no debris piles, um, feeders. If you have a feeder, it'll attract a mouse, which will attract a snake. So, um, so if you don't want snakes in your yard, then you can't have bird bird uh, bird feeders up. Um, however, I would rather have a bird feeder up and deal with snakes. Um, snakes are really not that bad. Uh, we have six venomous snakes here in North Florida. So, um, and 
they're they're really not that aggressive. Um, the cottonmouth, the reason why he jumps in a boat is because um, he's just trying to escape, and the only the quickest route is pretty much by dropping out and trying to swim away. Uh, but if your boat is under it, um, he'll drop into your boat and, and scare and make everyone jump out of the boat. Uh, so yeah, that's not a very good situation. Um, but yeah. So yeah, just leave snakes alone. Um, and if you have like rat snakes and that type of thing, they can go after the, the venomous snakes. Um, you'll, you'll find sheds of snakes uh, in your place um, and you'll know that a snake has been there. Um, so the snake shed is bigger than the actual snake because what it has to do is it expands the skin in order to get rid of it. Um, and it's very stretchy. So it's bigger than the actual snake. So yeah. Lizards, you'll never get rid of them. Um, they, these guys attract everything else. Uh, but they said uh, deterrence, cats, peppermint oil, um, and a commercial repellent. Um, these guys are so small, they can get through cracks and crevices and everything else. And there really isn't a disadvantage of them. Um, so I just leave them alone. Birds. This is another big area. Um, birds, especially this guy, um, he can put holes in um, in your siding and in your house. Um, and the way to stop this is by putting metal flashing along uh, the outside uh, of your house. Um, and so, um, but if he can get on the side of a house somehow with his feet on and parts on the side of the house and be able to grip, um, like if you have siding that's pretty slick, um, these guys won't be able to grip on. Um, so just exclude them the best way you know how, uh, but it's a territorial thing. Um, other birds, I mean, you will have other birds potentially in the area. Um, and sometimes they'll nest inside, but not not a whole lot. Um, this, this guy is a red-shouldered hawk. He is very common around here. Um, and they, they will go after um, all these other like rodents and other things. So he's very nice to have around. He'll also go after snakes. So you, you definitely want him around. Crows are very smart um, and they uh, like to clean up dead things. Uh, and vultures are, even though they're not very nice to look at, um, they will clean off the roadways of dead things on the roadway. So they're good to have. And water birds are pretty cool to have. So there's not really a bad, well, I don't know. They can nest in the house, but more than likely. Um, and poop on a car, I know it's not fun, but um, it does happen. But like, like I said earlier, you can have netting and fences. Um, you can have fake uh, owls and put them up uh, or things that um, cause flapping the breeze like cellophane or whatever and flap them in the breeze and um, get rid of them that way. Uh, the Migratory Bird Treaty Act um, protects most of your birds um, except for like the game birds so you're like quail and your turkey um, but if it's a neotropical migrant, another guy, in other words, if it's a guy that likes to migrate, so your waxwings, your cardinals, your chickadees, um, this also protects all the raptors, so owls and uh, eagles and hawks. Um, it protects them, and there's severe fines and jail time. So don't, uh, just don't mess with birds. It's not worth it. Um, and they're really. Um, they're not really a pest. I mean, yes, poop is not fun to deal with, but it's pretty easy to take a sponge, wipe off the area, and you're done. Um, it's a lot harder to repair a yard where a pig is made than a bird. So, all right. I know that was long-winded. There was a lot there. Um, if you uh, need to contact us or you have another idea for a Fun Fat Friday, um, then please don't hesitate um, to call us or come by our office and see myself, Brian Danford, or DeAnthony. Uh, DeAnthony is the ag agent. He can help you with sustainable farming, um, soil testing, and all, all the like. Uh, but all of our contact info is right there for you. Um, this video is sponsored by the Jefferson County, uh, Florida, as well as UF IFAS and FAMU Cooperative Extension, and, and I am the program assistant for 4-H. Uh, we have a lot of great programs, and hopefully you will 
tag along with us when we keep doing this again um, on our next installment of, uh, of this. So thank you again for joining me. And if you want to know anything more about nuisance wildlife, uh, you're more than welcome to contact myself or anyone else. Uh, thank you for joining me.